The year is 2020. 2020. Oh, man, really? That sucks. I never wanted to go back there, but all right, whatever. During Disney's Investor Day presentation, Marvel officially announces Armor Wars, a series centered around the character of War Machine as Tony Stark's tech ends up in the wrong hands. It's August of 2021. A year later, Marvel has just hired a head writer to, you know, write the series. The job title is pretty self-explanatory. It's February of 2022. The series is rumored to enter production in the fall of that year. It's now fall of 2022, and Kevin Feige has confirmed that Armor Wars will be six episodes long and start shooting in 2023. It's two weeks later and now confirms that Armor Wars will be reworked into a feature film. It's now October of 2024, over two years later, and we've heard nothing official since then. Hey Marvel, I just have to ask, what's going on with Armor Wars? Conventions have come and gone with dozens of updates on new projects, but Armor Wars continues to be overlooked by Marvel Studios. This is a movie that is stuck in even deeper pits of development hell than Blade is, and that says a lot. At least with Blade, we're getting constant updates on the process for better or for worse, but with Armor Wars, it's just been radio silence. It's gotten to the point where Don Cheadle himself has no idea what's going on. He very well just could be playing coy about it all, but I think it's funnier to imagine he has no clue what's going on, so I'm gonna believe that. It's a growing concern of mine that they're inching closer and closer towards canceling the movie, which would be a huge shame. There have been so many different rumors suggesting that, and while nothing official has even hinted towards it, I don't want to see this movie get put on the shelf. There's so much potential in a film like this, and Rhodey deserves to have his story told. Hell, a War Machine movie has been in development since 2011. This project is so long overdue and I would hate to see it scrapped. Armor Wars needs to happen. But here's the thing. It's easy for me to say all of this about the development process as an outsider, especially considering how much is working against this movie. The process has gone through not only a multi-year pandemic, but also a historic writers and actors strike in the industry. It's going to be hard to make progress on it when you literally can't do any development, but me personally, I'd much rather wait for a silly movie if it means that people get paid. Also, none of this is taking into account the fact that when it was announced, Armor Wars was just an idea. Disney pressured Marvel into announcing projects early so their stock prices would go up during the pandemic when things were plummeting. That's not even a rumor, by the way. This is straight out of the Reign of Marvel Studios book. They had no idea if this was something they even wanted to explore, but were forced to commit to it so some greedy CEOs can keep their second yacht afloat. Regardless of all that, Armor Wars is currently a movie in active development, and that's pretty great to hear. As much as it may seem like I'm complaining about how long this process has taken, I'm glad that they're taking their time with it to make sure that they get things right. Marvel is finally getting room to take their time again after Disney rushed them to make as much as possible, so it's good to see that they're using that to their full advantage here. I just wish we'd heard literally anything about this movie and got some positive updates on the film. The premise is really exciting, and I think there's a lot of room to do a great study of Rhodey's character, especially given the controversial position they left him off in. In Secret Invasion. Okay, okay, I get it. It's a bad show. You can stop your booing. We had the earth-shattering reveal that Rhodey was a scroll. While well, they refused to outright say when it happened, because I assume they wanted plausible deniability to undo this, the hospital gown he's wearing is the same one as in Civil War. It's not that hard to put two and two together from there and understand the implication is that Rhodey has been a scroll since then, meaning that he's missed huge events like the Battle of Wakanda, the entire five-year blip, and most notably, Tony Stark's death. His best friend is gone, and he doesn't even know it. It's a tragic retcon that people are very divided on because of how huge the ramifications are, and I have a lot of conflicting thoughts on it. With the Secret Invasion story... Okay, how did you all get louder this time? I'm talking about the comics here anyways. Oh please, the Secret Invasion comics aren't great either. I don't love the idea of these scroll reveals because they always result in shock value twists that undo character development. When the series was announced, I was weary of that because if things aren't handled correctly, it would spell disaster. And the show proved my fears to be correct, as I don't think they handled the Rhodey reveal very well. Had the show pulled it off better, I don't think people would have complained about it so much. Which, yeah, you know, obviously makes sense. If you do something good, people are gonna like it. It's just very hard to walk the line between shock value retcon and inspired narrative choice. The main way we're all going to find out if this was worth it is through Armor Wars. They need to pay off this moment and make such a bold choice worthwhile. And if I could be frank with you, I kind of like the intentions behind the reveal. Again, the way they executed it was really poor, but having Rhodey return to a life that's almost unrecognizable from the one he lived for 50 years would take a huge toll on him. Exploring the ideas of loss and grief through the perspective of someone who wasn't even there to experience it would make for a genuinely fascinating story if handled correctly. Does it suck that he wasn't there for such an important moment? Absolutely. Absolutely, on top of the fact that there are some really cool character moments in Endgame and Infinity War that we're just missing out on now. But I'd argue that channeling those feelings into a more interesting story would give Rhodey some much needed depth as a character. Despite being around since the start of the MCU, he's only ever really been a sidekick. 
Sure, he's got his own unique personality as someone who works for the government, but outside of that, who is Rhodey? Answering that question with a story about identity theft is a really cool idea and something I would love to see. As much as everyone wants to forget about Secret Invasion... Okay, what, no booing that time? Anyways, as I was saying... Oh, come on, man! Just let me talk about how these narrative threads have already been set up. I'd rather have them commit to the idea than change course because of fan backlash. Anytime we've seen a studio backtrack because of fan outrage, it has not turned out well. And plus, there's still time to salvage this idea and turn it into a great character arc for Rhodey in Armor Wars. Rhodey is enough of a blank slate character in the MCU to where we're not missing out on too many important character moments that we've seen since he was a scroll. and I think that you could tell a really interesting story where you dive into his psyche and see what makes this character tick. Just because the show fumbled the reveal doesn't mean that the payoff has to be bad as well. There's absolutely a way to make this story work and to do it in a way that honors Rhodey's character. Obviously though, the movie's gonna focus on adapting the Armor Wars storyline. That goes without saying, but I said it anyways. In the comics, Armor Wars was an event where Tony went around reclaiming stolen Stark tech from villains who had been using it to do crimes, you know, like villains do. While it's not going to be the exact same story since Tony's brain was fried like rice, there's a very clear direction for this narrative that I am dying to see. I think Armor Wars could be used as a movie to tie up a ton of loose ends in the MCU, all while delivering a satisfying arc for Rhodey. No Way Home established that Damage Control raided Stark Industries after the Mysterio drone attacks. It's safe to assume that they took some technology, and who's to say that that tech didn't end up in the wrong hands? Perhaps there was someone on the inside who was able to steal the tech and put it out on the black market. Maybe a certain power broker? That's right, this is how we can finally come back to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier's post credit scene. Sharon Carter has her job back in the CIA, but this time around she has no loyalty to her country and dire intentions. She's using the government to fund her position as the power broker, and that includes distributing the C's Stark tech to the highest bidder. I think it would be a natural way to continue that arc, and honestly is probably what they were trying to set up in the first place. With Rhodey being such a government man too, it would challenge his beliefs and show him firsthand just how corrupt the system can be. The dueling ideologies of someone who is betrayed by their government, for someone who believes in it would make for an interesting journey for the both of them. If this movie is going to be about challenging Rhodey's sense of self, then by having the government act as the villains, it would force him to confront that head-on in a really compelling way. You tear down everything he thought he knew and make him build that identity back up from scratch. It's a great way to get to know this character and what he stands for. Also, completely unrelated to that last topic, but this movie needs to include Justin Hammer. The fact that it's been a decade since we last saw him in the Sacred Timeline is a crime worse than any of the ones he committed. Even twisting that one test subject's spine. Honestly, there's probably a sweet spot there where it felt really good. Justin Hammer is the CEO of Silly Little Guys, but he's also a really fun character that the MCU needs to do more with. Now that there's a power vacuum with Tony gone and Stark Industries on the rocks, it's finally hammer time. He could try and make Hammer Tech the number one weapons manufacturer again with nobody in his way to stop him. Besides Rhodey, but he doesn't know that. In the comics, the stolen Iron Man designs were sold directly to Hammer, so they should just do that. It's so easy. Have Sharon sell the designs to Hammer, who finally gets ahead in the world by making money off of Tony's hard work. While Rhodey is trying to uphold his friend's legacy, Hammer is dancing all over and actively profiting off of his death. I honestly don't think there's a way to do this story right without including Justin Hammer. If you really want to make things interesting, part of the machinery sold to Hammer should be Ultron Code. He's already set to make his return in Vision Quest, so why not just keep him around for a story like this? If we're gonna have Rhodey cleaning up Tony's mess one last time, you may as well go all out and have Ultron be the villain of the movie. If they can bring back Ultron for a cruise ship of all things, I don't see why they can't bring him back here. Have it so Hammer is trying to sell Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine and her long ass name an army of Iron Man suits. After his drones failed the last time, he could try and use the Ultron tech to pilot the machinery before the obvious happens and Ultron is set loose again. I also think it would be a great twist if you make it so that Justin Hammer actually had noble intentions this time around. Fresh out of prison and inspired by Tony's sacrifice, he's a changed man who wants to do things right. He buys the Stark tech not to dance all over his legacy like I said before, but to continue it in the only way he knows how to. Sure, he may fail spectacularly, but that's just how all things with Justin Hammer go. Hammer tech? Yeah. I really like the idea of having him try and do things right, rather than just do the same thing he did in Iron Man 2 again. He can still be the screw-up we all know him to be, but let him grow and change into someone who's actually trying to do the right thing, it just spirals out of control and now it's Rhodey's problem. Also, one more quick tangent because I couldn't find anywhere else to naturally mention it, but this movie should include a handful of other Iron Man villains who never properly made it into live action. I'm talking people like Crimson Dynamo, Titanium Man, and Madame Mask. 
show how Tony's tech getting into the wrong hands has actively created new villains out there. It'll be huge for MCU world building, but also the stakes are going to feel a lot greater if there are a ton of active threats out there because of it. I also don't know when else they'd ever find the time to include these characters, so it's now or never. Give Rhodey some small C-list villains to fight as he works his way up to the big bad Ultron at the end. It'll give us some great action scenes in the film and show how capable Rhodey is on his own. Okay, that part of the video basically just turned into a pitch. I'm sorry, I can't help myself, it just takes over sometimes. But I'm sure you can see all the potential in a movie like this. There are so many unique angles to approach the film from. One thing I haven't mentioned yet that makes the movie more exciting to me is that at one point, Riri Williams Ironheart was planned to be in the film. She is an obvious inclusion and a smart one at that. Obviously, if Rhodey is going around the world trying to clean up Stark tech, he's going to assume the kid in the Iron Man suit is using some. Then once he realizes that she's actually just a galaxy brain teen who made it herself, she can join him on his journey. Working with Rhodey would give her some valuable experience as a hero with someone who actually knows what they're doing, while she can help Rhodey find new purpose as a mentor. He's gonna feel lost in life coming back to a world that didn't even notice he was gone, and passing this knowledge on to Riri could be a great way for him to feel useful and actually inspired to become a hero, rather than just a government puppet. Plus, they would have such a fun and chaotic dynamic together. Riri's unserious energy paired with Rhodey being so fed up and real all the time would be incredible to watch. When it comes to talking about this movie though, you can't ignore the fact that a huge theme of the film is going to be legacy, with both Rhodey and Riri handling that in two very different ways. Riri is the spiritual successor to Tony. She had no connection to him, but they share a genius level intellect that puts them on a level few others could even come close to. Rhodey, on the other hand, is more complicated. Tony was his best friend. His whole world revolves around that man through thick and thin. Now that he's on his own without someone that close to lean on, he has to grapple with such a huge change. He also has to consider how he wants to honor his friend and keep that memory alive. Live. That's why I think that Rhodey should become Iron Man at the end of this movie. It feels like a natural step for him to fully don the gold and hot rod red armor to continue his friend's mission in helping people. Over the course of the film, he could see how he was enabling the government to do these bad things and take a step back from that. It's not the government he signed up to join before he was replaced. The world has changed and he needs to find his new place in it. That won't be under President Thunderbolt Ross. He needs to learn that he could do more good as Iron Man than he ever could as War Machine. Moving away from being a government stooge into an actual hero that people look up to. The War Machine name comes with a stigma. There's a bad reputation surrounding it as someone who worked for the government was their lapdog. That's the whole reason why he went to Iron Patriot in Iron Man 3. They tried to soften up the branding and give him a more family-friendly appearance because they wanted to portray him as the government's Iron Man. And while that didn't work, he still has that baggage that comes with being the War Machine. He's always going to be looked at as someone who works for the government and is doing their bidding. If he ever wants to be an independent hero, he's going to have to find a new identity, and I think picking up the title of Iron Man would do just that for him. This isn't getting rid of his identity or discouraging the work he did as War Machine. He did some really good stuff there. But if we're going to move him into this more independent hero here, he's going to have to find a new name that actually fits what he's doing, and Iron Man would be just that. It's a natural fit for him, and a great evolution for this character to show how far he's come. They're already bringing Robert Downey Jr. back for Doomsday for some reason, so why not get him to record a holographic message to Rhodey about how Tony wanted him to be the next Iron Man. He could have built him a suit and everything to get the job done and actually show this passing of the torch. But it's like Happy said to Peter in Far From Home, nobody's gonna be the next Tony Stark. He's irreplaceable. It's up to Rhodey to make that mantle his own and make sure there's still an Iron Man out there inspiring people around the world. Obviously, he's not an inventor either, but he's got Riri to be there for him and keep the suit in tip-top shape. Or if you want to make some dramatic tension, have it so he's only got the one suit. It changes the dynamic between man and machine when this is all he's got, rather than Tony basically having an army of armor at all times. This isn't coming out of nowhere either. Rhodey very famously became Iron Man several times in the comics. Fun fact, during the original 1985 Secret Wars event, Rhodey was Iron Man at the time. His time holding the mantle lasted for the better part of four years as he donned the armor when Tony wasn't able to. I think it'd be really powerful to adapt that, it just makes sense for Rhodey's growth at this point. It's the natural next step to graduate away from the War Machine identity and a role held by the government into an independent hero and the Iron Man that the world needs. The main thing I want to see with Armor Wars, though, is to define Rhodey as a character. He's become a household name over the last 16 years, but despite that, he's never had a chance to live up to his full potential. The last time we actually got to see him as a co-lead on Project was Iron Man 3, 11 years ago! For Civil War, he was basically just a pawn in someone else's story, and Secret Invasion, pause for Boo, made sure that any cool moments he had in Endgame and Falcon and Winter Soldier didn't count. I want to learn more about this character so badly. What is Rhodey like when he's on duty? What are his wants and dreams in life? Does he like pineapple on pizza? Who is he when he doesn't work for the government anymore? We can't have it, so Fortnite is doing more interesting things with Rhodey than the MCU. Armor Wars is a chance for Marvel to take this iconic hero and give him the depth he deserves. It would be a huge mistake to even consider canceling this for a second. Whether it be a series, a movie, or they change it back to be a series again, it doesn't matter to me. 
great. What I care about is that they take their time to tell a compelling story with Rhodey in the spotlight, because yeah, I am looking for this. But I'm going to go ahead and end things there. Thank you all for listening to me rant about this for a little bit. If you enjoyed what I had to say, feel free to give the video a like and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. What do you want to see them do with Armor Wars? I'd love to hear what everyone has to say and continue the conversation down below. And if you want to see another video like this, you can click right over here. If you don't do it, they're just never going to make Armor Wars. The development process for this film is going to outlive us all. So please, subscribe so we actually get to see this film.